What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Canadian Football Fantasy Fix for Week 9 of the 2021 CFL season. I'm Ryan Coop here with your wide receiver preview this time. Uh, if you missed it, go back and check out. I've got quarterbacks and running backs previewed already out earlier today. And uh, I will also have your defensive preview out today as well. And a depth chart update because the first game of the week comes Tuesday night between the Edmonton Elks and the Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, so I'll have a depth chart update today yet as well for that. And uh, also I'll have depth chart updates out later in the week for the other games on the schedule as well. But let's dive into the receivers this time around. We'll go team by team, talk about which ones I like, I'm cautious on, and which ones I'm staying away from entirely. And it starts with that matchup between Edmonton and Ottawa. And let's go to Edmonton first here. And uh, the Elks coming off the bye week, uh, the week before the bye, it was Taylor Cornelius at quarterback facing that uh, tough matchup with the Bombers defense. Uh, wasn't a great day for a lot of wide receivers on Edmonton uh, last time around. Uh, Mike Jones putting up the best total that week at 11 points. Uh, this time they have a matchup with Ottawa. We don't know at this point that I'm recording this early Monday morning who the starter will be for Edmonton, whether it will be Trevor Harris or Taylor Cornelius. Uh, we should find out when the depth chart comes out later today, but uh, which I'll update you at that point. But uh, there are some receivers I really like for Edmonton, and it starts off with Darrell Walker for uh, as the high-priced option. He comes in at $7,632. Uh, I... I I think he's a great play this week. Uh, he hasn't really hit the value a lot of times. Uh, he's had some disappointing games, but, uh, you know, he's averaging just 11 points. To get the full 19.1 point value out of him, you do need uh, him to put up a big day. But the, the thing I really like about Darrell Walker is the targets are there. In his past three games... Nine, eight, and nine are his targets. And in fact, out of that one, out of the game against BC in week number three, uh, where he only had four, he's had seven or more targets in every single game this season. Week one against Ottawa, he had eight catches for 98 yards. Uh, great day for him there. His best total on the season. Uh, there's going to be a lot of passing available against Ottawa. They give up, uh, they are one of the worst defenses in the league. Uh, also, with the rookie quarterback, I. For Ottawa, I could see them being out on the defense being out on the field a lot. And uh, whether it's Trevor Harris or Taylor Cornelius, last week we saw Cornelius really like to target Darrell Walker. They just couldn't connect. And if they can, I think it could be a good day for him. He has had some down days this season, but I do like Walker this week for a nice bounce back game. Uh, I also really like Mike Jones. Uh, again, I think it's going to be a good passing day for the Edmonton quarterback. Uh, $4,890. 12.2 points out of Jones gets you 2.5 per thousand dollars, which gives you, in my opinion, full value. Um, on the season, he's averaging 10.7. Last game uh, against Winnipeg, put up 11. Uh, he seems to, on his good games, hover around that 11 to 12 point range. So I, he has one game of over 20 against Calgary back in week number five. I don't think it's a huge ceiling for Mike Jones, but I think he should be able to put up steady production for you. Uh, I also do like the cheaper options of Jalen Tolver and Ernest Edwards. Uh, last week, both... Uh, 4.4 and 5.3 points, respectively. They're both averaging 8.7 in three games. Uh, at $2,500, it's a pretty low point total. You need to get full value out of them, and uh, they're hitting close to that, if not that, on every game they've played so far this year. So I like both of those options. I'm cautious on Greg Ellingson. Um, again, the play against Ottawa, like it should be a good play. Greg Ellingson should be a guy getting a ton of targets in this Edmonton receiving corpse, but uh, he really hasn't in a lot of games this year. In his, uh, you know, in the games he's played, he's had a couple games at uh, in the middle with nine, with nine targets, ten targets. But other than that, it's been fives and fours the rest of the way. So uh, for his price point, he's not getting heavy usage by this Edmonton offense, and I think it's hard to predict which game he is going to have his big games and which ones are going to be more of a disappointment. Uh, he's had more letdowns than not throughout the season, so I say stay away from Greg Ellingson this week. 
uh, or be cautious in that regard. Uh, Shy Ross, I'm also cautious on. Uh, he is seemingly taking a bit of a step back in recent weeks. He had good value earlier in the season, but uh, in his last three games, uh, 0, 4.4, and 0. Uh, and hasn't really gotten into a full starting role uh, in the past few weeks since uh, Tolver and Edwards have been in the lineup. They've kind of been shifting Ross around a little bit uh, to work with the ratio there. Uh, and then stay away from Tavon Smith. I think his price is too high for his usage. He's averaging just 4.7 points. Uh, and uh, also saying stay away from Armonte Edwards, who has missed a bunch of time due to injury, and in the odd chance he is back this week, which I don't think he will be. Uh, he also had, wasn't didn't produce when he was in the lineup for two games. Looking at the Ottawa side of things, uh, there's only one option I really like here for the Red Blacks, and that's Nate Bahar. Uh, I think it's going to be a rough week again for Ottawa, and... You know, fair to say, I think it's going to be a rough week for them all season long. Uh, but they have a rookie quarterback coming in. They have a short week this week, uh, a rare Tuesday game for the Red Blacks against the Edmonton team coming off the bye. That has been decently good defensively. I, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for a lot of these guys. But the reason I like Nate Bahar is because he has been steadily targeted by the in this uh, Ottawa offense every single week uh, uh, so far this year. Uh, he comes at a lower price point of 3349 so you don't really need a ton of points. Just 8.4 should be enough to get you your value out of him. And in his last four games, uh, you know, six targets last week, 11 the week before, seven and seven in the two games before that. Uh, so they've been kind of ramping up his usage a little bit. And granted, the Ottawa passing game hasn't been accurate, so a lot of those targets have gone for incompletion. Uh, but last week he had 5.4 against Hamilton, and then the three games before that he had over 10. So I like Bahar. It's decent value, a cheaper option. And if in the event this Ottawa passing game gets going this week, I think he's a pretty safe play at a lower salary. He has that floor that he's going to get you some points out of those targets. The two I'm in the yellow light category on, Devontae Deadman, $5,589. His salary is rising. Oh, look, in his last two games, nine, over 19 points in both of them, over 250 return yards in both of them. Um, he had a touchdown last week. The matchup at the return position is really good here because Edmonton did give up a return touchdown, I believe, to Mario Alfred and the Montreal Alouettes earlier in the year. Uh, he's averaging 13.7 in five games so far this year. So he's really close to that two and a half per thousand ratio. I do like Deadman as an option. I'm just wondering how consistent can you put up 250 yard return games? Like this is nuts to me that he has been able to do so uh, in back-to-back -back games. Uh, maybe I should put him as a green light, but I'm cautious because the salary is starting to rise. And if he really doesn't get in, it all depends on whether he gets into that starting offense and gets some reps there. If he does, I'm probably moving him up to a green-white category. Uh, if it's solely based on the returns, I think it's tough to hit that total every single week for Deadman. You know, 250 return yards alone is just 10 points. Uh, so he would need a touchdown or some offensive reps to get you your full value. Uh, I'm also cautious on Ryan Davis, $4,447. He's averaging 12.2 points this year, a nice year for him. Uh, after putting up 26.9 points in BC against BC two games ago, fell back to earth with just 5.7 last time around. So he should still continue to be one of the more targeted receivers in that offense for uh, Ottawa. Uh, last week he did just have three attempts, but the Ottawa passing game as a whole kind of sucked last week, to be honest. Um... He has been heavily targeted in a lot of games this year, but he has had a few, uh, which were disappointments for him. So uh, I, I'm cautious on Davis at the price point. If he was still around 2500 I think he'd be a lock, but uh, at a 4447 I, I think it might be a tougher play this week given Ottawa's uh, quarterback situation. And then I'm staying away from R.J. Harris, who... Uh, has been up and down this year. You know, he had one week of 15.1, one of 15.7. Other than that, his highest point, point total is 7.6 on the year. I think the price is too high, so I say stay away from R.J. Harris. Stay away from Daniel Peterman, who was a backup last week. 
Uh, he had that one monster week of 26.7, and other than that, uh, has had his highest total being 7.2. So I don't think you're getting value out of Peterman on most weeks. Uh, and then also staying away from Kenny Stafford, played his first game with the Red Blacks last week and uh, had one target and uh, did not catch it. So zero points for him in that game. I need to see him more heavily used before I consider going Stafford's direction. Moving on to the Friday night game between the BC Lions and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, let's start with BC here. This is going to be a great game, by the way. Uh, I think these are two great offenses and two great defenses going head-to-head. -head. And you have a real matchup here of the Lions have that explosive offense and a Bombers defense that doesn't give up uh, a ton of passing touchdowns or things through the air. So what's going to break here? There are still some options I like for BC, though, and... He's a high price point, and it's really tough to get you full value of... You need over 25 points from him, but I like Lucky Whitehead once again like I did last week. Uh, that's two straight weeks of over 25 points he's put up. Uh, the week before, he put up 22.7. He had 24.6 in the first week of the season. Uh, I really like Lucky Whitehead uh, because of his speed. We saw last week against Saskatchewan. Heck, it was a screen pass, a hitch pass to him that he took 40 yards to the end zone, basically untouched uh, to get to pick up a touchdown. He picked up two touchdowns in that game. You're going to need probably at least a touchdown out of him, I would think, uh, which might be tough against the Bombers. But the reason I like him is because of that speed and because of that usage. They haven't given up a ton of points, but we've seen that Bombers team on defense give up uh, some bigger plays because they just haven't made good tackles. Uh, and, and I can see that happening again, you know, screen passes to Whitehead, him using his speed to get into that secondary. I think he can have a big day against this Bombers defense once again this week. I'm saying I, I also like uh, as a green light, so give him the green light. Keon Hatcher as a value play at 2,500. Again, I think the, the, you know, Bombers sloppiness when it comes to tackling at times, you know, one catch to Hatcher, maybe he breaks a tackle or two. You're getting close to 6.3 points. If he breaks, say, a 30-yard catch. Uh, last week was a disappointment at 3.7, but the weeks before that, 11.5 and 12.8. I like him for a bounce back this week. If he is in the starting lineup, that's the question mark. If D Lamar Durant is back, Keon Hatcher probably won't get the start. So uh, put a bit of an asterisk on that. But if he's in the lineup, I do like the cheap boy there. I'm uh, in the yellow light on Javon Katoy. Uh, he started off really strong, 20.3 and 16.9, and in the last two weeks has fallen back down to 9.1 and 8.6. So a bit of a regression for him in the past number of weeks. It seems like Lucky Whitehead's the one consistent spot for the Lions, uh, but I do think he still has the ability to put a good point total on the board and be one of the go-to receivers in that Lions offense. Uh, I'm staying away from Brian Burnham, $9,612 uh, in, in his last two games, 6.2 and 7.1. Uh, it seems like he's been injured uh, the past few weeks. He's been questionable on the depth chart. And uh, look, Lucky Whitehead's only 200 and something dollars more. I really like Whitehead as a better play this week than I like Brian Burnham uh, as an option. So I say stay away from Burnham. Go with Whitehead instead if you want to pick a high-priced BC receiver. I'm also staying away from Lamar Durant. Uh, he's missed a number of weeks due to injury. Uh, he's averaged just 8.6 points on the year. I need to see a good game from him once he's back in before I go his direction. And uh, staying away from Shaq Johnson as well, who put up zero points last week and uh, has only hit full value one game on the year uh, with 9.8 being his ceiling on the season. Getting into the Winnipeg side of things, uh, Nick Dembski's the option I really like here. And I, I've, you know, every week, I don't know if I've put Dembski as a green-white once yet this year because I've just anticipated, you know, expecting him to be kind of that second tier of receiver in Winnipeg. But he keeps getting the usage. He doesn't have a ton of targets his way, which is why I normally have such a hard time picking him. But he's averaging 16.6 points. They're looking at him near the end zone all the time. They're looking at Tadamski with the big play. They're giving him the rushing plays. The last time out against Edmonton, we saw him take that one to the house, uh, break like six tackles. It was nuts. Uh, I do like the matchup. I like the gadget plays you can run with Nick Dembski. 19.5 uh, fantasy points is what you're looking for from him this week. 
Uh, last two games, he's put up 18.4 and 18. So he's been really close on that value. Uh, he has had a game of over 20 earlier this season. So, And his lowest point total on the year actually was uh, 12 points. So uh, you're getting a decent floor and you're getting a pretty good ceiling here with Nick Dembski. I, I, I think he's a consistent option that I do like for this game. In the yellow light, I have Kenny Lawler at 7,434. Uh, because he's been kind of up and down so far in a few games this year. He, When he is getting a lot of targets his way, he should be a lock. The problem is he's had two games in the last three weeks where he's put up under seven points. He's gotten very few targets, and it's been guys like Dembski and Bailey and Adams taking charge there. So uh, I'm cautious on him because could this be another bounce-back game like he had in the Banjo Bowl against the Riders where he put up 20.7 or are we going to see the usage we saw from him last game out against Edmonton? It's been up and down in the last four weeks, uh, so I'm cautious on going Lawler's direction based on that because we don't know what we're going to get. I'm also cautious on Rasheed Bailey. A good bounce back game from him last week with or last time around with 13.2 points uh, in four of his last in four of his seven games on the year. He's hit full value for you. In the other three games, he's put up uh, his highest being 4.7 points. So uh, much like Lawler, kind of up and down. If he gets the targets his way, uh, he should have a good game. If not, uh, he's not going to put the total for you. It's not consistent for Rasheed Bailey, so I can't put him as a green light or a red light. I'm saying stay away from Darvin Adams. Uh, at $7,208, you need 18 points out of him. Uh, last time around, he did put up 18.3 uh, but I think he, I still think he's touchdown dependent. I think it's hard to go in Adams' direction every week because if he doesn't get that big play, then you're getting a disappointing effort out of him. I, I think he is, you know, starting to gain more speed in his last three weeks. He's improved his totals 10, 13.9, and 18.3. Uh, but if the other options of the similar price point, I, I trust Dembski and Lawler to be the two guys that are going to get more targets than Darvin Adams does. Uh, staying away from Charles Nelson, the Bombers' return game has been atrocious this year. Uh, Drew Olatarski also not getting heavy enough usage. Uh, he has uh, one game of 9.5, one game of 9.8, and then everything else has been basically five points or under on the season. I think there are some way better value plays out there than Wolitarski. And if Naaman Roosevelt eventually does make his way into the starting lineup, uh, I want to see a game from him before I consider putting him in my lineup personally. Getting into the Saturday games, let's start with Hamilton and Montreal. Uh, the Ticats, uh, we don't know who's going to be at quarterback yet at this point in the week. I'm thinking... It might be David Watford again, but Mazzoli has been the backup the past few weeks, and uh, I am assuming it's only a matter of time before he is healthy enough to be the starter. Uh, there's also some question marks this early in the week of who's actually going to be in at receiver for the Tie Cats. Uh, is Brandon Banks going to be back? He's been on the one-game injured list. Uh, Devere Posey was on the six game, but got moved to the one game last week and has to be close. Uh, Braylon Addison also has been... Uh, you know, on the six-game injured list for a while and did tweet something a week or two ago about possibly being ready to be back in the lineup soon. So uh, a lot of what I say here about the Ticats receivers uh, depends on who's in the lineup, frankly. But let's go through each of them and assuming they are in the lineup. Uh, the one I really like still is Tim White. Uh, White has put up 11.1 as an average in six games, which is a very good average. For a guy who I believe this is his first season in the CFL. You need 10.2 at his salary to get your full bang for your buck. Uh, last week was the first time he had kind of dipped below a, a, a good week with 7.8. But that was still a decent week. Uh, in his last five games he's been pretty consistent. 9.8, 21.9, 9.5, 10.9, and 7.8. He's always going to get a couple targets and be able to make some plays. So I like Tim White in that middling price range. Uh, I'm cautious on Poppy White and Stephen Dunbar Jr. They're both cheaper plays at receiver, uh, White being the cheapest of them. Uh, last time around, Poppy White put up 0.9 points, which was a disappointment. The game before that, 
16.3 and 7.3. So uh, he has been able to get value in two of the last three weeks, but last week was a setback. And Stephen Dunbar Jr. had a touchdown last week that gave him 12.7, uh, his second time on the year, putting up value for you. Uh, I think he's a little bit touchdown dependent, though. He doesn't get the heavy, heavy workload. The only thing I will say on that one, though, is they are facing Montreal again, and he did have the big debut against the Alouettes in week uh, number three or four, I believe. 21.5 points in that game. I don't know how much to make of that. Uh, and to weigh that into, you know, facing the same team again. I wouldn't take a huge ton of stock in it necessarily. I think Hamilton spreads the ball around decently well. So uh, I think Dunbar Jr. has, you know, a low point total you need him to hit and could be a good play, but it depends if he gets the proper targets his way. And then a lot of guys I'm staying away from. I, I'm in the camp of stay away from Jalen Acklin at this point. Uh, he's, he's been... You know, hasn't really had a strong game, I would say, uh, besides maybe week five, week six, week five against Toronto with 12.6. And since that debut, uh, that start of the year against 22.8, I guess it's not really a debut. His first game of 2021. Other than that, all of his performances have been under 10 points. Uh, I do like that his salary is dropping, but he hasn't gotten a ton of targets his way. So I, I think it's tough to bank on Jalen Acklin having a big week. Uh, Brandon Banks, if he is back in the lineup, salary is way too high. I don't see Banks putting up 32 points in a game uh, just yet uh, at all. I think that's way too high. Same thing with Braylon Addison. 27.1 is a really tough number for a receiver to hit, uh, especially if he's missed all year due to injury. Uh, and Devere Posey also, I I want to see a game back in the lineup, uh, his first game with Hamilton before I slot him in. Uh, 18.6 points, I do think he could maybe hit that total if he's back in the lineup, but uh, it's such an unknown uh, how he plays into uh, a receiver role for Hamilton. So I say stay away from all of those guys. And then stay away from David Unger as well, uh, who has averaged just three points uh, a game so far this season and has put zeros on the board in back-to-back -back weeks. Getting into the Montreal side of things, uh, not really any options I love for Montreal, which seems to be the case each and every week. Uh, I do like them, it's just a matter of which one do I like, and that's why I put them all as yellow lights. Uh, last week, big weeks for Eugene Lewis and Jake Wieneke, both giving you full value, being two of the top three uh, receiver options last week. Uh, 23.7 for Wieneke, 25.2 for Lewis. And two weeks ago, or two games before that against Ottawa, putting up 31 and 29 respectively, but just 6.1 and 12.5 in between. It's been up and down. Uh, I do really like Eugene Lewis still as an option. He His average is going up. He's having, had some really good weeks, and he continues to be the most targeted receiver in that Montreal offense. The problem is his price has gone up. 24 points is what you need from him. That's a tough task. Uh, I do think it's doable, uh, given that he had, I think, 12 targets last game, and if he keeps getting that workload. Hamilton is also a, a, a much better defense this week, I think, against the pass than Toronto missing some pieces was last week. So I'm cautious on Lewis there. I'm also cautious on Wieneke. Uh, he, you know, his price is raised in as well. 22.5 points for him. He did pick up another touchdown. He did pick up another good game of uh, a lot of passes last week. Uh, and I think he can hit your total for you. I'm just not sold on it in this matchup with Hamilton. Uh, last time around, this Montreal passing attack really struggled against the Ticats. Uh, BJ Cunningham, also yellow light. Uh... He just really doesn't get the enough targets every single week. You know, he had 19.6 points in week number one. Since then, his highest total is 13.6 two weeks ago against BC. So we haven't seen Cunningham really lead the team in receiving as much in the last number of weeks. And we see a lot of games around that 10-point mark for him, which I think is a bit of a disappointment at that salary. Uh, Quan Bray. At $6,780, uh, first game back in the lineup last week, 12.6 points. Uh, he does have a decent floor for the most part, it seems. Three straight games, he's put up over 10 points, uh, but he hasn't really broke out for a game over 13 yet this year. So 17 is what you're looking for from him. 
I could see him maybe getting you two points per thousand value if he can get in for a touchdown. That certainly helps, but it's hard to bank on touchdowns uh, in CFL fantasy. So I'm cautious on Quan Bray as well uh, because you don't really know how this Montreal passing attack is going to perform and who is going to get the, the touchdown, which would really put any of these over their value. So maybe a bank on one of them and just hope you guessed right. Uh, if you want a ranking of which ones I like the best, I'd probably go Lewis, Wynicky, Bray, and then Cunningham uh, in that order, I, I think is how I would go as my preference this week. Uh, and then the ones I'm staying away from, Dante Absher was out last game on the one game injured list. Uh, he hasn't really put up any big performances this year. Uh, I say stay away from him, especially since I think he would be a backup with Bray back. Uh, Keon Julian Grant averaging just 1.7 points per th uh, per game this year. And uh, return man Rashad Ross, 4.7 points last week. It's not bad, but I think there are some better value plays, so I stay away from Ross this week, who will solely be a return option. Getting in the final game of the week, Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Calgary Stampeders. Let's start with Saskatchewan. Uh, I do really like a couple of their receivers, and it's their kind of middle-priced options. They are rising in salary, uh, but I still like Braden Lenius and Keon Schaefer-Baker uh, for a lot of the same reasons. Uh, Lenius has been Mr. Consistent this year. In five of his seven games, he's put up two and a half per thousand dollars. In uh, another game, he put up uh, at least two points per thousand. He only had one bad game against Bombers where he put up 2.8. He really won't break you a 20-point week, it seems, on any given particular week. Uh, his he, his highest total was last week when he put up 12.6 points, but he's hovering around that 10 to 11 range. Uh, if you, you know, if you're looking to, say, maybe spend more at some of the other options and hope for, like, a big play guy like a Eugene Lewis or a Lucky Whitehead, and then are looking for just a consistent production that you know you're going to get, as another cheap receiver option. I say go with Brayden Lenius. He's proved it every single week. Also, the matchup with Calgary is good. They do give a lot of point yards up through the air. Which is the same reason I like Keon Schaefer-Baker. A bit of a setback last week with just 5.9. But in the games before that, 14.3 and 24.9. Uh, I do think he is growing into one of the best options in that Riders receiving corps. And uh, he is a guy that can make some big plays. So I like Schaefer Baker. Nine points isn't a huge total to hit to try to get value out of him. And the ceiling is clearly pretty high on him this year. I'm cautious on Ricardo Lewis because he had a big game last week. He got his first career touchdown, put up 18.1 points for the Riders. But uh, that's one big performance that really skewed his, skews his average. Other than that, his highest total, 5.3. He's also at 3.5 and 0. Uh, so show me this consistency, and maybe I move him into a green-white option. Staying away from Kyron Moore, uh, after the Labor Day game against Winnipeg, where he had 15 targets and had a, a very good 18.5 points, it's gone downhill since then, 11.4, 5.6, and 9.8. Uh, they're starting to get some of these other young receivers uh, a little more involved in the offense. So uh, Moore is not getting the heavy target load uh, once it, and, and that he was. I think 19.6 points is uh, is a bit high of a stretch for this week. I do like that his salary is dropping, though. And uh, the matchup against Calgary is good. But I do like the options of Lenius or Schaefer Baker uh, a little better, actually, than I like Moore. Uh, and also of note, uh, no Jordan Williams Lambert on this chart this week because he is on the six-game injured list. And then finally, taking a look at the Calgary side of things, uh, this is uh, a matter of there's a lot of Calgary receivers on here, and you see I, I like some of those green-white cheaper options. It's a matter of what the depth chart looks like, though, and even then, Calgary likes to spread the ball around. How many times do we see Bo hit seven different receivers in a game? A couple backups getting in for a few plays. They like to spread the ball around. Uh, if these guys are starters, I like Colton Hunchak and Dan Williams the uh, third. Hunchak has, you know, had a pretty good game last week. He was in for Herji Mayala, who was on the one game injured list. Uh, 9.6 points last game for Colton Hunchak. Going back to 2019, when he got into a starting role, 
He had a couple good games there as well. I, I think he is a good value play option. I, I think he is a guy that Bo likes to go towards. And uh, we don't know for sure yet. I would imagine Bo is starting at quarterback this week. I, I, I said it on the quarterback preview. I would really like to see uh, Jake Mayer get the start, but... I am doubtful that happens. Uh, if he is in the starting lineup, which typically he is a backup, I do like Hunchak as a value play. I also, in the same way, if he is in the lineup, like Dan Williams the uh, he, he If he is handling return duties, which he did a good chunk of last time around two weeks ago, uh, and is involved in the passing game a bit too, 9.1 points last game for him. I, I love the receivers that are $2,500 and get involved in uh, the return game because you have the floor of return yardage, plus you have the points uh, that he gets from if he gets a reception or two. Should give you full value as a cheap, cheap play there. Uh, the guys I'm cautious on, I'm cautious on Josh Huff. Uh, 6172 is the price. He had some really good weeks there in the middle of the season. Uh, but it has gone back down slightly since Bowie by Mitchell took over 11.6 points uh, and three points in his last two games. Uh, I do think he can be a big play guy, and I think the Riders do give up some big plays. And Bowie by Mitchell loves trying to target him for the bigger play. Uh, so that's why I have him in the cautious category, because I think Huff could come down with some, uh, some big yardage there. But uh, the price is higher. The passing game isn't going well right now for Calgary. Uh, Bo Levi Mitchell is struggling in his past two games. So uh, I am cautious on Josh Huff. I'm also cautious on a guy with one of my favorite names in the CFL, Luther Hakunavan, who, who uh, did last time around put up a big 12.8 points. Uh, that was the result of uh, a big, big catch. Uh, should be a backup, I would imagine, though. So uh, I think the the potential of him getting some big plays again is uh, is lower. So I am cautious to go in his direction unless he is actually a starting receiver. Staying away from Kamar Jordan, I think the price is really high. I know he put up 33.9 points against Edmonton two weeks ago and uh, is Bo Levi Mitchell's favorite target at receiver normally. But uh, I think he needs a lot of targets and a lot of plays in order to hit that value. 24.5 is really tough to hit. And I do like some of the other options like a uh, Lucky Whitehead or a Eugene Lewis at the same price point more than I like Kamara Jordan. Uh, I'm also saying stay away from Markeith Ambles. Uh, there just does not seem to be that connection between him and his quarterback. Uh, two weeks ago, at something like 17 targets and he only caught five of them. Last game, uh, only one target, one catch uh, that didn't really go anywhere. So uh, in his recent games, you know, he's averaged 11 points on the year. In his last two games, 10.5 and 1.5 since Bo has been back in the lineup. Uh, I think Ambles has had a bad case of the dropsies, pardon me, a lot of times through this year. Uh, and uh, it's hard to bank on that production at that price point from him. Also staying away from Herji Mayala, who missed last game and has just a 4.7 point average on the year. And uh, Richie Sindani, who did get in for his touchdown last week, but in most weeks, uh, or in most games, sorry, they were on a bye last week. In most games, you're not getting value out of Richie Sindani. So those are all your options at wide receiver this week. I think there's some good options at each kind of level of price points. Uh, you've got some big name receivers I really like, some really low value plays, and some options in the middle. Uh, again, like I said, off the top of the hop, top of the hop, that's a fun saying, top of the show. Uh, if you uh, missed it, go back, check out the quarterbacks and the running back preview out already. Stay tuned for defense later today. I'll also have a depth chart update on Ottawa and Edmonton and uh, touch on any fantasy impact uh, on that. I have a feeling there will be quite a bit based on who is starting at uh, which positions for both teams. Uh, do all the YouTube things, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't. If you have any fantasy questions, put them in the comments section or tweet them at me, at CooperTrooper42. Uh, the link's in the description. It starts with a K. 
and if you uh, want to play CFL Fantasy alongside myself and other viewers, check out the link in the description to the uh, Canadian Football Fantasy Fix League over on the official CFL Fantasy site. Uh, play alongside myself and other viewers this week and every week throughout the 2021 season. That does it for the wide receiver preview. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.